Yes, that's the answer. The answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes to your best. God's answer to you is yes. He wants for you the best. So if you have any questions about God, do you really want this for me, God? How come I haven't seen it yet? How come it's so delayed? Just know right now that God's answer to you is yes. Yes, yes. I want for you the best. You know, my daughter, she wants to go to Asia. She wants, she's into to, to BTS and Korean pop, you know, K-pop and so on. And we say, you know, surely, yes, you want to travel the world and you want to go to Asia. Yes, but not right now. You have CXC. And my son, he's into computers and he wants us, you know, a super computer and with all of the fancy stuff, you know, and, and, and all the specs that make it really powerful. But yeah, well, we say yes, we're saying you, you have a laptop. So yes, to that best. But right now, use the laptop until that comes. And why am I saying that? Because the, one of the challenges that heaven has with us is our expectancy. Our expectancy. And, and often the lack of true expectancy. Believing that we will have the best from God. And I believe heaven has a challenge with us. And this is why Jesus in Mark eleven twenty two 22 says, have faith in God. What it means is expect your best, the best to come from God. The thing that you want, the best thing you want, the best. Expect it, have faith in God. And this is the challenge I believe heaven has with us, with me, and probably with you. Our expectancy is low, our genuine expectancy. Are we expecting that God wants to give us the best? Well, yes, he does want to give you the best. And we need to believe that, you know. I, I'm, I'm still in Jamaica here. I'm in Kingston. I think I'll, I, it, I, I will be here for a while. So stick with me and uh, we'll continue to, to share on these rapture ready messages for a bit so that you are prepared for the taking out of the church, the removal of the believers that fine day. You know, I, I fully intend to also do some, some, some share some messages regarding what to expect after we're gone. For anyone who has not expected the best from God, who has not walked with God and hoped in God and find themselves here while we are there, and that they know what to do. But for now, we talk about getting ourselves ready because one day, one day there's gonna be an opening of the door, you know, this is a corridor, uh, a little passageway, and you know, it's, it's symbolic of time. We're gonna go through that hall of time, and there is a final door that's to be opened, and we're gonna see what's on the other side. You know, we do a, we do a skit for our outreach ministry, uh, and it's called, it's called uh, after, life after birth life after birth and it's about two twins well twins not two twins twins in a mother's womb and they are um, tossing and turning and one is 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 doubtful about there being life after birth and the other is trying to 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 tell tell his brother that hey don't you feel the love of mummy that there is a mummy don't you believe in a mummy don't you believe that there's something beyond this? And, and this is the, the play, the skit that we use to, to demonstrate that there is something on the other side of this experience of time. There is a pathway that will lead us to something else. 
And you know what? Behind that door is God's best for us. His biggest yeses. His biggest provisions. And we're going to talk about that today. But we're talking about making sure your expectancy level is turned up. You know, I'm Jamaican, so I can say turn up, turn up, turn up. You know, I, 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 I shared with my, I shared with my, uh, with a class that I teach that, um, and I, I'm going to take them into it. And I want to uh, remind you again, because we've, sh I've shared this before uh, about the uh, midday miracles, miracles at midday and miracles at midnight. And having an expectancy that God will come through for you in something, with something, from midday and from midnight. And so that you're constantly exercising your spirit to believe God. You, you're constantly exercising your spirit to believe God. And that you're constantly forcing yourself to expect from God. And you're looking to his word to base your expectancy and your expect well your expectations on his word listen to this in second corinthians 1 verse 18 to 22 and it's from a co contemporary modern version it's not the king james rendering this is a contemporary version listen to what it says first corinthians 1 18 to 22 as god is faithful our message to you is not yes and no for the son of god jesus christ whom we proclaimed among you, you know, Selvanus, Timothy and I, did not become yes and no. On the contrary, in him it is always yes. In him it is always yes. In him it is always yes. Verse 20, for every one of God's promises is yes in him. Every one of God's promises is yes in him. That's Jesus Christ. Once you're in Christ Jesus, every one of God's promises. What's God's promises? Provision, protection, preservation, uh, peace, and so on. It's all granted yes in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we continue. Therefore, through him, we also say amen. To the glory of God. Amen. That's acknowledging, that's accepting, that's knowing, that's expecting that yes, it's coming to us. Now it is God who strengthens us. This is verse 21. Now it is God who strengthens us together with you in Christ and who has anointed us. 22. He has also put his seal on us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a down payment. This is Paul writing and Paul reminding the church that God is saying yes. Just put your hand on your chest and say, God has said yes to me. God has said yes for the best for me. God has said yes. Hallelujah. You accept that. Praise God. And so we do those. I've taught the, this class to, to expect. And I, I'm, I'm constantly teaching persons to expect God's best. Behind the door after this life, yes, is going to be that ultimate best. You know, one person said this. Uh, I believe it's Carman, the singer who is now gone on. And he's already, he's gone behind that, that door. He's walked his, his walk. He's served his time and he's gone on. And he has found what's behind that door. He says, to see Jesus, to see him is a wonderful experience where it is as if everything you've ever desired is just overwhelmingly met. And that's just seeing Jesus. There's so much more in him. But Carmen, in, in perceiving, because he had an encounter, he had a relationship with the Lord. And, you know, like uh, it must have been like what Paul says, I know a man. Who was caught up into the heavens, who who saw things. So Carman said, yes, Carman, that you can look him up, this singer, he's gone up, gone on to glory. But he says, to see the Lord, to see him, is to have every desire, that, that overwhelming feeling, that sensation is to have every longing of your heart, every desire instantly met. That's what it feels like. 
And, and that's just the meeting of the Lord. But we know there's so many other promises. And that's for, for, for that time, right? After, after the rapture or whenever we transition. But even as we walk out this time, in the corridor of time, there are some yeses that God is saying to us. Yes, he wants the best for you. Yes, he's bringing the best. Some things may take some time to be presented, but just know that you can expect the best from God. And that's guaranteed. His best, the best for you is guaranteed. God's answer to you is yes to your best. Listen to this. It's, this is the, the, the rendering in, in the King James Version. It says, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. Unto the glory of God by us. That's the second Corinthians 1.20. The same passage we were reading. But this is in the, you may know it in the King James. That it says, uh, for all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. We read the contemporary version. So, but realize that we have an adversary whose effort is to try to frustrate you to make you not expect. In fact, for us to expect less than the best. For us to expect less than the best for ourselves. And as we walk with God, he's still, you know, trying to, to, to make us doubt. That's what doubt is. That's what worry is. That's what fear is. It's expecting less than the best. In fact, it's expecting the worst. That's what fear is. It's what it amounts to. Remember uh, in the Garden of Eden, when uh, Adam and Eve were around and, and the, 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 the Satan came in the form of the serpent or uh, embodying the serpent serpent and he made Eve doubt that God was providing the best and had provided the best and had even better things in store. He said, has God said, well, God knows that the day that you eat, you will become wise. You'll become like, hello. She was already wise. She was already awesome. She had, she had all that she needed in that garden. She had all the provision. Everything was perfectly made. There was nothing she lacked. The issue of the opening of her eyes was a deception to make her experience evil. And to go to a place of experience in something she was not, that would not be healthy to her mind, her soul, her body, and so on. And this is what the enemy wants to do, to bring doubt and to make us expect what is worse and not the best. When God says in, 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 through Jesus Christ in his teaching in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God, have faith in God, expect from God, expect from God, expect from God. And so for me, midnight, I'm expecting God to be working on something for me. Midday, I'm expecting God to work, to be bringing something to pass. Miracles at midday, miracles at midnight. That's just my, my expectancy. And I, I invite you to join with all the persons that have shared that with and expect, pray and expect. God, I thank you for a breakthrough during this midday hour. I thank you for a breakthrough even during the midnight hour. Thank you, Father. And you continue to expect from God. And we watch out for the allure of the enemy, the tricks of the enemy to make us to start to doubt, to say, no, the future is not good for you. You're walking with God, but there's no good future for you. That's a lie. That's not from God. God's best is there for you. The thing you most want is what God wants for you. The thing you want is what God wants for you. You know, even through the struggles of this present life, as we walk through the corridor of time, and the struggles we go through, the challenges we go through, you know what stabilizes us? These promises. Even though there are challenges and you may see the sicknesses and you may see um, financial wants and you may see uh, uh, relational wants or you see loved ones passing and so on. You know, trying to hold on to, 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 to faith, to, to trust in God, requires holding on to God's word, to a promise, to his promises, to knowing that he means to do uh, excellently by us, for us, through us, and to give us more than we could ask or think. 
And we have to cause our, our roots to go deep in his word. And that stabilizes us as we walk out this corridor of time till we reach the other side, the end. Remember, it, it's, 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 it's all about being ready, ready, uh, prepared to walk out this time. You know, again, you're seeing what's happening uh, just, this, uh, just this week. Uh, well, a couple of days ago, the, the U.S. Uh, evacuated their, their embassy in Kiev in Ukraine. And it is seeming like uh, hostility with Russia is, is very likely. And um, Jamaica too, we have uh, sent out uh, reminders to all, our, to all our students who are studying in Ukraine to evacuate, to get out. Uh, I'm not sure what are the efforts that the government has in place to get them out, but there are, there, the, the, the word has come, get out. And now, why is that relevant? Well, if you saw what, what we spoke about last week, we're talking about uh, uh, rapture readiness, uh, persevering through the pressure. Uh, the reality is that when we see the conflict between um, the U.S. and NATO uh, forces against Russia and China and Iran and, of course, North Korea, then you know we we, we wonder. We say, is this you know the, the Gog Magog dynamic, and is this the the brewing of the final? Um, destructions, uh, you know, and so on, because it is not like World War Two or World War One, because now we have there are weapons that can literally end the planet. You know, the arsenal of Russia alone, uh, nuclear weapons can end all life on Earth, and uh, we still have Canada, we still have the United States, we still have China, we still have Israel with although it's a, a, a secret program, all, all having um, arsenal, nuclear arsenals themselves, all right? Uh, so, and of course the UK too, France and Germany as well. And so uh, if all of that um, power and weaponry is there to obliterate all life on earth and hostilities begin between them, uh, it is only, uh, we, we prepare ourselves for, for anything because it could literally be the end, but God knows, and you know, uh, fear is not is never the the ultimate position. We 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 operate by faith, you know. Have faith in God because God's best is there for us, and His He says yes to our best, you know, uh, the best for us. His best is His best is is meeting our deepest needs you know giving us what we perceive as the best you know i, I want to read a passage for you i want to read a passage for you from john 14 12. Uh, how do i know that god says yes to the best yes to the best well listen we get his mindset we get his mindset i mean from what i read to you first from from sec from second corinthians 1 18 to 22, in him is yes, not, not yes and no, but yes, not yes, maybe, in it. no, yes. We get that from 2 Corinthians 1, 18 to 22. Read it in the modern uh, contemporary version for easier understanding. But let's read John 14, verse 2. It says this, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, this is Jesus talking to his disciples as he prepared them to walk through life, the hallway of time. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. I go, it's, it's a part of my plan. It's a part of my plan to prepare a place. And if, if God is preparing a place for us, guess what? It's not going to be uh, less than the best. The Bible teaches us that he gives us more than we could ask or think, more than we could imagine. That's the type, the kind of God that we serve. And so if 
we get we if Jesus told his disciples this, I go to prepare a place for you. It means he's up to pre preparing something wonderful to, to woe them, to woo them and wow them. That's just the kind of God he is. You say, how do I know? Well, you look at what God did when David walked with, with the Lord. What did David have? Uh, an economy that prospered. David was dressed regally. Where did he come from? He started as a, sh a shepherd in the fields and he had more than he could ever ask or think you listen to what david says in the end of his life he says god how come you did all of this you have blown my mind that's contemporary again in his prayer he says you've given me so much and you've not only me but you've made provision for my children and children's children how god what is it that about me that you give me this best and that was just God giving him a few stuff. And then comes Solomon. And the Bible says silver becomes more common than stones in the street. And this wealthy, the wealthy queen of Sheba in, in, in Africa comes up to visit Solomon and says, Wow, the half has not been told of your glory and the splendor and your inventions and the, the wow of your living. And God was just showing something small. You remember the temple was overlaid with gold and, and God was just doing a gesture so that our faith, our expectancy is elevated even in this time. That was a gesture just so that we learn to believe God that he has our best on his mind and he has settled it to give us the best. Yes to the best. And we must rest in the fact that God is saying yes to your best. And, you know, we don't get caught up in fear and, and, and you know, and, and struggling and saying, God, how come? You know, I've been there. The enemy has whispered in my ear, you know, oh, how come? Well, you know, you're going through this and you go through that. Why try to, you know, push those thoughts away and stay on I, I I know I do my best right now. I give my be I, I work hard and I focus and do what I must do. But my best or the best coming to me is going to be by God's promises. It's going to be by God's effort and not just my own. It's God's word that makes me know that good things, awesome things, more than I could ask or think is prepared for me. You know, the Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. That's the kind of language God uses to tell us that coming to us down the line behind the special door of time is the provision of everything. Yes, we have time. We have to go through some stuff in this life, but there is something promised on the other side that will knock our socks off guaranteed. And we have to rest in that and not get too perturbed with the struggles and the, the issues that we go through right now. Just rest knowing that God Almighty says yes to your best. Okay? Uh, know that, you know, you, you've heard this in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. If you've never heard it, I, want, I would like for you to commit it to memory too. It's a passage I'd like for you to commit to memory. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. I know what I'm planning for you. I know what I have for you, says God. That's God's word. He, and from the Old Testament, he was telling us that indeed, I know what I'm about. This is, he used Jeremiah to prophesy to comfort Daniel, who would, who would be born year, many decades later. And Daniel would read this word and be comforted in Babylon. And you and I must read this word and be comforted in this time in our own life. Daniel is gone. He is behind the door. He's gone on to glory. You and I are still here and we have to hold on to, to these promises and know that God says, yes, you will have the best. 
Okay, before I pray with you, I, I, I want to remind you that uh, all the things that we go through, you know, you many people say, if God loves us and God has so much good for us, why do we go through so much hurtful things? Just know, you know, everything is, God is dealing with us and dealing with things on many levels and many, there are many uh, realms that God is dealing with all at the same time. And we just have to trust him that, you know, uh, when he says, you know, wait, or when he says, um, uh, you know, I, I, I have it, I have something for you. I have, a, I have prepared a place for you, you know, um, the, the present inconvenience and discomforts do not make you think that this is my lot forever. You know, that you, you rest in knowing that, yes, he has prepared the best for me. You know, it's like chess, playing chess. These are chess pieces. You know, each, each, each piece moves strategically, you know, and when it's a turn, it has to move and it has, you know, it's, 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 it's all, it's the game of chess is about strategy and moves and counter moves and so on. You know, and many persons, many thinkers, especially the, those who are managers or, or a war, um, given to war, like the generals and so on, they tend to play this game because it solidifies for them the issue of strategy and, 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 and pre-planning and, and uh, responding to, to, to an opponent and their strategy and so on. And guess what? There is a, is a, it's a sort of chess that's going on, you know, and um, we have to trust that God, as he moves us as the, the pieces in this, this experience, that ultimately he wins and ultimately we win. And, you know, and though there may be a threat, like I, I was, I was watching a video of, of a, a, a youngster playing, it wasn't chess, it was checkers. And, uh, he, it really looked as if the youngster was getting clobbered. All the pieces were being eaten by the person he was playing. It looked like an older person. And he was down to like two pieces and the other person had like about, you know, 14 pieces or something like that on the board and uh, or 12 pieces. And it was all a setup. The youngster was so good that he used the, it was a setup. He was setting up the other person to eat and to be excited about winning. And then he ate all the other, the, his opponent's piece of winning the game. So it was a setup. So I'm saying all of that to say, rest in knowing that God is working out. It, it, it may seem like things are down, like in that game. It may seem like you're going down and you're being beaten and so on. But remember, as we talk about rapture ready, as we talk about making sure we're ready for these times and for when the church gets called out, called out that we are prepared to go, we need to know that indeed God is moving the pieces around and it can look uh, difficult and it can get, uh, you know, tough, but we still have to trust God's word. It is yea and amen. His promises are yes, so be it. Yes, you will win. You will have the best. You will have the best, you know, just walk out the, your life, serve your time, do what you have to do. You hang on to God's word, trusting, you know, you don't do like Eve, throwing in the towel, listening and believing what the enemy says and living in fear. But we live in faith, knowing that God has said yes. Here's what Paul also told his people. Paul said, as he tried to make all of them uh, hang in there and, and, and walk out their life so that they could have their final, final blessing uh, at the end. They could experience the best that's prepared for them once they walked with God. He said this in, in Philippians 3.14, he says, I press, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, I, I play, I don't play a whole lot of chess and checkers nowadays. My brother does. He plays it online. I, I, pl I play some video games every now and then. And, you know, even in the video games, 
their prizes so that you know you it, it, they, they put you you get this trophy that you move up to the next level there's a reward and it motivates you to fight on and to press on and fly through and to whatever there's always something to win a prize well if if the writers of those programs know to do that how much more god knows that there's something that he wants to give us for pressing through and, and walking out this this life there's something he wants to give us and it is the best. So let me pray with you. And I, I declare that you will expect, you know, you're not going to expect the worst and the pop down, break down and all oh, woe is me issue. But no, the best. God, you're giving me the best. You're giving me the best. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for the one watching. Lord, I thank you that their faith will remain Lord, despite whatever they're going through, that they will trust you. That as you move the pieces around in their lives, God, they will still trust you. Even if they see the pieces falling away, Lord, and it seems difficult and it seems hopeless, they will know that you are saying yes to their best. Lord, strengthen her faith. Strengthen his faith even in these times. And we will give you all the glory, God, even as we rejoice when you bless us and when you provide all of the best that you promised us. Thank you, Father, for this one watching. I bless her household. I thank you for him. I bless his household. I declare they shall be strong in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, come on, say it loudly. So be it. Amen. Bless you. We'll talk again.